The question people always ask me is, AI going to cause huge unemployment? It's the same question I was asked during the microelectronic revolution, uh, you know, the internet revolution. Somehow in the popular imagination, there's always a sort of fear that these technologies are going to cause massive unemployment. And somehow we don't learn from history. The core of productivity is doing more in less time, right? And technologies are always sold in terms of making us more productive. So that's the case in the workplace, that you'll spend a fortune on technologies in the workplace because it will make workers more productive so that you'll make more money. Well, I just don't buy that story at all, but I think that's a handy story for people who are marketing those kinds of technologies. Economists use very abstract models, and if you want to measure something abstractly, then kind of the easiest thing is to look at specific tasks and then look at something like ChatGPT and think, OK, well, if some of the task is kind of drafting an article, then we can use this technology to do that. What that doesn't kind of capture is a lot of what forms that labour takes. Jobs are, in practice, a complex set of talents and skills and crafts and communication and relationships with colleagues and teamwork and decisions and a whole host of things make up a whole job. At the moment, actually, a lot of the systems that we're told are seamless and frictionless are very far from that. There's problems with even designing algorithms that aren't gender biased, race biased, age biased, cultural biased. I mean, there are so many problems with a lot of these technologies. There are so many so-called hallucinations, as they call them, which is that these technologies actually um, are not accurate, that it's so far from any notion of human intelligence. It seems to me that while things are designed to be monetized in particular kinds of ways, then those technologies aren't going to be the best technologies that we could possibly have. Monetization, advertising, attention, they're the models we've got. We really need to do a lot of critical work to stand back from that and think, well, actually, these technologies don't need to be designed in these ways. Even things like the platform economy, rather than Uber workers being sent around by algorithms, we could have a cooperative platform that the workers themselves ran and decided what the schedules would be and how to share out the work. I mean, I know that's just a kind of fantasy example, but, you know, we have to think of different ways in which to kind of use these technologies and embed them in their everyday lives that aren't ones of extraction, of extracting our data and extracting our attention, but basically giving us things and giving us more agency and control. Imagine if all of that brilliance and energy that is being taken up by those companies was laser focused on how to solve the energy crisis, the climate crisis, to produce housing that was easy to construct and cheap to maintain. I mean, you know, there are so many real world problems, but I just think if I could harness all of that brilliance and get them to focus on a few other kind of problems rather than a chat GPT or more apps, that's what I would like those big consultancy firms somehow relish putting out reports saying this many million jobs will be automated and lost and it kind of creates panic, it gets a lot of traction, a lot of publicity and I guess because it's simple it's just saying there'll be automation and it's much more complicated actually to you know look in detail about what's happening with jobs and how they're changing. It's like letter writing in emails, it isn't like emails are the same as letters that faster emails are written in a different way, they mean something different, they communicate something different. It's a completely different mode of communication, the shift from a letter to an email. And I'd say that's the case with, you know, the application of technology to any kind of work. It actually changes the nature of the job and often profoundly. The most profitable industries at the moment in the world are the big five corporations. Um, all American, all in Silicon Valley. They are the biggest, most profitable 
uh, companies that we have ever seen. People like Elon Musk have got wealth that we can't even comprehend. You know, the, the Silicon Valley companies actually do occupy a huge amount of our imagination in terms of thinking of the future. So, you know, when you ask people about the future and what they'd like, they will often talk about, you know, having fantastic technologies rather than a just society. And, you know, I'm very struck by the space that the technological narrative takes up. You know, this technological revolution will do amazing things. I mean, there are phenomenal applications of predictive technologies. There are myriad ways in which these technologies will improve our lives, medical lives, energy. But what happens, as far as I can see, through my long history of looking at these things, is that some jobs are replaced, some jobs are changed, and lots of different kinds of jobs are created. And at any point in time, it's very hard to know which of those things is going to be the dominant thing.